the eye of the hurricane. <laughs> You know, I work for like magazines, so like they had already pushed their stuff out, so they're in the middle of stuff. Oh, so at least see. it's not as crazy, but they're starting to do finals now for stuff, so people are crazy. Fun. Which magazine company do you work for? Uh, Sandow. Uh, they do uh, in, uh, uh, in, uh, interior design, <laughs> new beauty, kind of high end magazines, okay. Lux, things like that. So. Ones that are printed on a nice paper stock and. Yes. And like New Beauty is like the ads are basically fifty percent of the magazine is plastic surgery. Oh, I see. Kind of people, doctors. Yeah. So that's where they get their money there. And then Worth, sort of, you know, like uh, uh, Worth is one of the uh, magazines they deal with money in general. Of course. Yeah, I don't know. It seems like a little, a little telling that a beauty magazine has fifty percent of its. Space well, that's what's made for, really. It's, it's sort of hidden. They get all this, oh, how to stay young, but oh, yeah, here's your... Here's the real answer. Yeah. Surgery in it, a few thousand dollars or so. And that's doctor's pay. A lot of money to get in that magazine. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we're muted. I'm unmuting us. I'm putting us back in the middle of the table. You can see uh, half of us. Uh, yeah. Mostly we want to the slide down there a little ways or something. Hey, Rich. Hey, Rich. Hey, what's going yeah. on? 
is going to talk can't to hear can him, hear him. Yeah. talk to him, us about uh, uh, would you be able to hear that? That'd be too much to ask for. <laughs> Sorry. Can you hear me I'm now? Just, collection. You know, I'm I'm not good with computer. Can you do sign language? <laughs> <laughs> Can you do sign language for him so he knows that we we see him and we're working on sound? This thing has a button on that yeah, says laser on it. I just really want to push all buttons that say laser. Can you can I you hear us? Right now? Huh? No, you can't hear us. Laser pointer built into this thing. I can hear you guys. Can you wave your hand if you can hear us? He can hear yeah, us because he was okay. responding when I said hello before. Just we can't hear him. Yeah. It's just a matter of choosing, I guess, to write uh, or turning the speakers device. on in this room or whatever the heck it is. Testing. Hello. Hey. That's closer. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. We can hear you. Actual sounds. Computer speakers. We have some sound. Who are the actual speakers for? For the Don't cry for me, Argentina. The truth is, I never left you. You were supposed to. You were supposed to be immortal. That's true. That that did not go as planned. Yeah. All I had left was Argentina, which is currently having no money and can't bring me back. It's very sad. Are these speakers in this room? Wouldn't it be just awful if they were? Ceiling. I don't know what those things are, but... Oh, those are projectors. There's the projectors. Um, there's uh, a sound system. Um, I mean, there's certainly speakers yeah. above our head in the recess. Yeah. These yeah. ceiling yeah. tiles. I'm sorry. New room. Yeah. You keep on changing rooms. It keeps on messing you up. You, you, get, to, you get used to the other. It's a USB hub. Well, any input here for is audio? That, uh, Apple TV? <laughs> no, it's Google. This uh, touch panel. Do you guys have a crow oh, stick by any chance? Is there anyone from IT in the room? No. <laughs> there's a bunch of Not from Google IT. Yeah. Uh, there's there really should there's be a touch panel here, here but uh, I need, there's an actual. What I need is the plug. Do, do you not have an IT department you could call for something like this? Oh, yeah. Power, <laughs> we got video. This this bundle of cables seems promising, but finding the end of one of them. Oh, here's an audio hooked into the video. Oh, well, that's let's, promising. Let's, let's, Here, let's give let it me, a uh, hold on. Wait, wait, oh. There we go. Okay. Good eye, good eye. What's... Well, he went away. Oh, possibly. Possibly. We're going to have to mute our own microphone, I guess. Uh, we'll see. We might. Which is that I can't leave on volunteering my time. It's just such a clown. It's just such a clown. It's just a clown. All right. See if we can hear you. Hello? Something. No. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Because I can hear you. Turn the audio out. Put on the mix of the headphone jack. Maybe it didn't like kick over. Yeah, no, you gotta do it on Google Video. Can you hear me now? Because you see it register when we talk. There you go. Just not pushing it. I think it's safe. I think that. Yeah. Rich, say something. Hello. All right. Can well, you hear he can me still now? hear us, but we can't hear him now. I can still hear you guys. Is there, is there like a control well, panel on the wall yeah. somewhere to like turn these? It says on? here you can actually. The volume's on that. Right. Default speakers. The thermostat. Video source. <coughs> you know, <at> <coughs> Those are lights. Yeah, just lights. Okay. Sign up and down buttons on maybe yeah. the design. Yeah. Okay. I mean, maybe just deal with. Uh, Test it out to see if you can hear me. So you can turn Yeah, that's all right. Let's get started. I apologize. Okay, we can hear you on the internal speakers. We'll all be very yeah, quiet in the room. room. Okay, so you guys can hear me now? We can hear you. Oh. Okay, good. Uh, how about now? Say something now. Hello? 
Hello. Hey, finally. Hello. Random plugging and unplugging, as always, successful. All right. <coughs> so, uh, welcome, everyone, starting. Oh, if we pretend at 4.30 is when we start, we're right on time. Um, welcome to the first Mac Evan monthly of the year. Uh, welcome back from the New Year's. Uh, we asked Rich to talk to us today about uh, some of the recent security updates, uh, particularly the methodology that Apple used to deploy, particularly the NTP update. But anything along those lines you'd like to talk about, you are welcome to talk about. Uh, okay. You know, sort of as structured or unstructured as anyone wants it to be. Uh, but we thought, you know, we could start off if you could give us an outline of what. Not as much as you want to go into about what the NTP issue was, but more importantly, how Apple went about uh, remediating it, and then you know, can ask questions and stuff like that. Okay, I'm going to try sharing my screen since that may be a little easier. I actually have a blog post on this, awesome. so I should be able to show you guys uh, roughly <laughs> what got discovered. Um, so let me try to share my screen. Let's see if that's actually going to be successful. Do you need technical help? Uh, let's find out. Uh, yeah, it's asking me about things. Here we go. Managing OS X's automatic security update. Okay. So, uh, do, do, do. so essentially, what was going on? Why do you plug uh, your blog first? Yeah, I was gonna say, what's the address of your blog? It's an awesome. Uh, your my blog. blog is. Let me. Dear Flounder. Uh, Dareflounder.wordpress.com. Uh, hopefully you guys get. Uh, it's right there. Hopefully you guys can see that. Do we want to know what Dare Flounder means? Uh, I I have previously publicly stated that I will reveal what Dare Flounder is actually all about the day after Jamf reveals what Jamf is all about. So I feel very safe that I will never have to reveal that secret. So the first computer I ever used was called Flounder, and it was named after a character in uh, Animal House. Interesting. I'm assuming. I can neither confirm nor deny that's close. <laughs> um, so at any rate, but uh, yeah, dearflounder.wordpress.com. Um, so you guys should be seeing uh, an entry for managing OS X's automatic security updates. Indeed. OK, so uh, on last month, on Monday, December 22nd, um, Apple released an update that just kind of mysteriously installed on everybody's machines. And people proceeded to freak out and say, how did that happen? How could Apple do this? What wizardry powers were they using? And fortunately, uh, thanks to the powers of uh, IRC, and in particular, uh, Michael Lin, who goes by uh, Mikey Mikey on Twitter, uh, basically, it looks like the change is due to um, some new keys that can be added to uh, the software update feed. I'm going to try to make those a little larger. So basically, what happened was that Apple added some keys to the NTP update, this auto install delay, zero, and critical update true. and this tapped into functionality that Apple apparently started building in in Mountain Lion, but has never previously used before, to basically say, I want you to automatically install this with no delay whatsoever, do it as soon as you can, and that this is a critical update. And because it was marked that way in the software update feed, um, Macs that were set to install automatically install critical updates just did it. So this is the first time Apple did it. And the reason um, they haven't really said why they chose this particular update to do it over previous ones. But the vulnerability involved NTP, that you could uh, basically uh, execute arbitrary code um, using the NTP daemon. And since that is turned on and enabled on every single Mac, I think, since 10.3, uh, this was obviously something that Apple had running on every, pretty much every Mac. And, you know, they were able to leverage this automatic update mechanism back through 10.8, so they just did it. So if you want to go uh, ahead and take a look for yourselves 
at uh, the software update feed for 10.8, 10.9, 10.10, 10, you should see, uh, for the NTP update for those, you should see this auto install delay and critical update uh, keys that have been added to the extended meta info um, for this particular update. And this is, this is going to be pretty much the only example you're going to see of this right now. That may change in the future, but right now this should be the only one that has this particular set of keys in it. So that's how they did it. Uh, will they choose to do that more in the future? Only time will tell. I personally think it's not necessarily a bad idea to have this enabled for much the same reason that I don't think it's a bad idea that XProtect and Gatekeeper updates install automatically. Uh, but, you know, this is going to be something that everyone's going to have to decide for themselves whether or not they think this is a good idea. Uh, one thing that is important to know about this is that I'm, I'm sure everyone just probably had the screen zoom out on them. Um, but if you uh, uncheck the automatically check for update checkbox, and there is a default key that goes along with this, Actually, you can also set this with software update with software update schedule off. If you set software updates uh, automatic check to be disabled, all automatic updates come to an end. You know, you won't get uh, security updates automatically pushed to you. You also won't get uh, XProtect and Gatekeeper updates pushed to you. So if you're looking to leverage um, XProtect to help you protect against malware, you're going to have to have this automatic check on. Now, that said, you can separately manage those. So uh, what you can do is there's actually a option. Let me see if I can <coughs> find where this is. One second. So if you deselect, so you can have the automatic update check going, but if you deselect install system data files and security updates, um, what would have happened would have been that the NTP update would have shown up as something in your software update feed that you should install. It won't install it for you, uh, but it'll come back and say, I think you should install this. It's a really good idea. Please install this as soon as possible. But because you have that option unchecked to install it automatically, it won't. And let me see if uh, there is actually a default key that goes along with this. And I don't know if I had it in this entry or if I had it in another. I have it in another. So one second, let me pull that one up. Yeah. So hopefully I'm still sharing screen. Uh, so hopefully you guys are seeing managing yes. automatic installation of config data. So to manage uh, the automatic updates with the auto install delay separately from the XProtect updates, what that's going to be is that uh, you will need to set, so in this scenario where you want to have your XProtect and Gatekeeper updates to continue to be installed, but you don't want these automatic updates like NTP update automatically installed, what you would do is you would uh, basically write to com apple software update um, critical update install and set that to false. Uh, for XProtect and Gatekeeper updates, it's going to be using config data install. So you can set config data install to true. You'll continue to get XProtect and Gatekeeper. If you set critical update uh, install to then false, you'll then be stopped from getting updates automatically installed, uh, like the NTP update. Now, of course, the fun thing about that is that uh, because you need both conditions satisfied to actually check this box, if you set one to true and the other one to false, it'll show up as unchecked. So at that point, you're actually going to have to check the keys. So does anyone have any questions so far? Uh, that integer um, that you showed us in the previous post, uh, is that representing days, hours, or is it just on and off? Um, it's just kind of an on and off switch. I'm not sure what you mean by days and hours. 
Well, because it, it, you had it at zero, right? But I'm assuming if you put one or if you were, since it's an integer, you know, I wasn't sure if you could just... Oh, it's it's not an integer. It's actually a Boolean flag. Okay. So it's going it's, it's to be true or false. And it may show up in the plist as one and zero, but that's binary. Yeah. Right. Binary true, binary false. Well, so what does the auto install delay key actually represent then? Oh, um, I'm not sure that you two are both talking about the same thing. We may I'm... not be talking about this. So you're talking about this auto install delay yeah. with this integer, right? Uh, in that case, um, to be honest, this is the first time we're running across auto install delay. I'm not sure what else you can set it to. Uh, I know that setting it to zero basically means don't wait. Um, I don't know if uh, if this integer represents hours, days, seconds. That that may take some additional testing by other folks. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is going to be since this is coming through Apple's software update feed, you know, it's going to be whatever Apple sets it to. And I'm assuming that if they're going to be using this, it's going to be because they want something installed right away. Now, that said, it could be that if you're running, you know, Reposado um, or you want to try to, uh, you know, if you're running Apple software update server and you want to try to mess with the feeds yourself, it's possible you could get it to do something else. Um, for me, I, Apple's changes would just kind of overwrite that right away, so I don't know what else it would do. Interesting. Yeah, I thought, and I was a little confused too, because I thought that was actually a setting on the computer itself, not in the package. But I realize now that it's actually part of the package. Yeah, that's part of the software update feed. So um, this is something that Apple's driving the bus on. What we're driving the bus on is whether or not we want that update installed automatically. Mm. Anybody have any other questions? I think that's it. Do you know uh, how this how this functions when you have an Apple software update server in place? Is this software update feed pulling it directly from? Is there essentially an, an uh, additional delay? Because I would say I would say yeah that there is going to be. Um, an additional delay if you are managing your own updates. Because presumably you could uncheck this OS X NTP security update 1.0. It's going to show up like any other software update. Uh, it's just that it has this, these extra flags associated with it. If you are talking directly to Apple, say, via, via uh, a caching server, um, in that case where you're not managing the updates, you're just basically maintaining a local copy for convenience. In which case, that'll, you know, since Apple is ultimately driving the bus there, uh, it's going to be whatever Apple says. Probably another immediate push, triggering an immediate push yep. to the clients. More than likely. Okay. Um, so just to say with uh, an Apple software update server, it replicates at 3 a.m. So, and then that's the time of the server. So I'm in London, so 3 a.m. for me, when Apple pushed the update here, it's that you are going to have an inherent delay from that. And then if you cascade them as well, and if you've delayed that, like we did, it took 10 days for it to hit our software update servers. So in theory, it should be up to 3 a.m. in the Apple software update server. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the caching server should get it almost immediately. Yeah, the caching server it doesn't have a once every 24 hour poll, is no. my understanding. OK. Hi, Rich, by the way. It's Ben. <laughs> And was that Ben Toms I heard? Yeah, that's me. Hey, Ben. Hello. Glad to hear your voice. How you doing? Um, I look awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Crutches and all. Yeah. Awesome. So, and also I'd like to just, you know, once again, I think I mentioned this earlier, but uh, Michael Lynn was really the person who found this. Uh, it was kind of a, it was a joint collaboration in IRC, but I don't want to take credit for actually finding this. That was definitely Michael Lynn. He had found it, and uh, he was the one who figured out basically how this was working. I basically I documented this and tested it. 
um, but he's the actual discoverer. Wasn't Greg working on either through MSU or you know, some type of add-on where a software update would be able to install uh, the config data between the gatekeeper and the act protect? He teased something. Is he not around to be snarky in the background? Uh, I have not seen him being snarky in the background. It's possible he's around. What I have seen is that uh, he is... Uh, this is going to be through Reposado. I talked with him briefly about it, um, where he's getting the config data updates, like uh, the gatekeeper and xprotect updates, to show up in the software update feed. Right. Uh, okay, so at least in making them available to clients rather than having to make it with the schedule being on. So overriding the lack of visibility when you just try to manually run it. Right. Yeah, and that's the thing with um, with XProtect, the unpleasant surprise that a number of Mac admins ran into, you know, because they're used to, I'll manage the updates for my users, so I'll just turn off this automatic check, and then when they did that, they lost their XProtect and Gatekeeper updates as well. And it was kind of that you have to do either or. You have, right now, unless... Hopefully, Greg can find out a figure out a solution or someone else. Um, if you want those expert, those config data uh, updates, um, you have to have the automatic check enabled. Anybody have any other questions or anything else? Any other pressing questions about Mac OS and security? Did you guys hear about the Thunderbolt security that got revealed uh, today? Why did we? Today. So the Thunderbolt security issue is at least getting talked about today. Uh -huh. I don't know if today was the very first day. The, uh, the, the Thunderstrike. Thunderstrike. Thunderstrike, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was a few weeks ago. That's on yeah, that, that, that popped up, I think, a couple weeks ago. It's scary. It's definitely scary, but it's one of those things that what do you do about it, you know? Aside from preventing, aside from gluing port your Thunderbolt ports, I'm not quite sure what you can do to prevent it at this point. I mean, it's not even uh, something you can, it's not in the OS, it's not in... Well, what's, what's the actual issue for those that Is it just another DNA-based uh, um, where it doesn't actually take effect? Well, it, it can ref if you've got a Thunderbolt device, you can refresh the firmware. If it can get to the firmware, yeah. Yeah, so you, I think it can get to the firmware. Yeah, the thing is that any you can make a Thunderbolt device that you just have with someone and then you right. look in your own. Like a the machine is like a Thunderbolt display adapter dongle that you've modified. Okay, so after so the it's something people have been talking about for a long time. Yeah, this, this is this is this is this this basically makes the evil made attack you know possible on your Mac. So not only that, but this someone can just. Oh, this Mac and plug in and your own walk away. You have no idea when anything happened. But meanwhile, all of the firmware has been compromised. All that has to happen is the device has to be plugged in and your computer has to restart. <coughs> Literally nothing else is required once it's properly programmed. Well, that's a restart. Yeah. Hmm? That's a restart eventually. Yeah. You don't have to restart while the thing is plugged in. Well, no, it has to restart. That's my understanding. <laughs> I believe the Thunderbolt device has to be connected at restart. Uh, maybe. Like at boot, yeah, in so order to reflash the the ROM. I think you can revert it. You can revert it, but it's uh, you can't detect it's that it's there in the first place. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, well, unless they change the actual definitely. boot process or something, you're not going to know. Right, Apple is working on it, I'm sure, but. So when you want to buy a load of Thunderbolt devices and you see them really cheap coming from some, another country, right. <laughs> just you know think about it. <laughs> right. And just for safety's sake, don't restart your computer while you're connected to somebody else's. Uh, Projector or whatever. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a, the concern is like you know, don't leave your computer in a hotel room unattended. Right. Right. Leave your computer anywhere unattended ever, which is right. So it's totally a realistic. Difficult. Yeah, totally realistic security. Yeah. Concern. Fortunately, it does at least require physical access to the machine, so that's, that's somewhat limiting. That's always been kind of the rule, though, isn't it? Physical it's access means it's almost compromised. It's always been kind of the rule. I know we try to mitigate it through. Things like firmware passwords, file vault, and stuff like that. So right. There's always been that, that thing, isn't there, about physically you kind of assume that someone could grab it. Yeah. 
I think it's the the thing that's concerned a, a lot of security people I've talked to is that it is the undetectability. It's like somebody gets hold of my machine and does something to it, it's probably detectable, but someone could compromise my machine, install, you know, whatever, a keylogger, and it's undetectable. That's kind of... And with... Uh, even if you wipe it... And right, and if I wipe right. it, it's, it's still there. You read yeah. it from where instructions set with the OS. Sort of, but that goes to the Sort card. of. And, and, and the firmware could lie about what it was there. Right. If your compromised firmware says, no, I'm legit, it's fine. Yeah. There's no trusted boot option in OS X that where you, right. you know you can check some of the firmware every time you boot against something, mm -hmm. blah blah blah. So it's the kind of thing too where you know 99.9% of users are never even going to hear that this is a potential vulnerability. Um, so even though it may affect a very small, you know, it may be attempted a very small percent, a very small number of times. Uh, there's very little that would stop somebody or really even give somebody a red flag if somebody said, oh, hey, yeah, this is how you connect to our network. Here's the adapter and plug into your Thunderbolt port or whatever or plug in this display connection. What does the exploit do? The exploit basically gives you, it would give you theoretically the access. It's like a rootkit. It gives you access to uh, installing key loggers, installing... To the OS once it's right. So then the OS is making calls to the firmware. You can bootstrap yeah, anything in the firmware. To do anything. If you if you were to have Fall Vault though installed, um, would it still be affected upon like you know when you read like got to the computer turned off, you got the, the Thunderbolt device plugged in, you're booting up, but it still affect. It wouldn't be able to steal your password until you entered it, but then it would be able to. Right. <laughs> Yeah, you're you're basically good up until the point where you put it, like like Ed just said, you put in your password. But if it has a key, you know, like a password keyboard logger gone, well then you're host. It's like a newfangled key logger. <sighs> but is this Among other things. Yeah, it isn't just key logging. Mm -hmm. That's one it of the most straightforward you things you can do. Right. Right. So, it can log keystrokes to things like your disk encryption key, even. TPM. So Pepin was saying that uh, the iMac 5K is the first to have option ROMs, option ROMs disabled to a newer Mac. Oh, Jesus. You your heart's <laughs> I can't see them. Could you read it to the rest of the sentence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're saying that. So he that S2 sleep which is more serious. Uh, yeah, that ROM is right enabled after the wake. Oh, I see. Ouch. Uh, therefore, you can modify the ROM. No dongle. But they never, they, they have this enabled now on newer Macs. But they have that five case of first to have to say, <coughs> so you should just go buy some vodka and Macs and things. There should be a kit to turn them into laptops. I like to make everything actually a uh, <laughs> little problem. So I'm going to do outset on boot. Every boot, I'm going to reflash my firmware. I think that's what I'm going to That's probably the same. That's probably the, that, that's the smart idea. Yeah. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> every time you read, why is it every time I read every boot twice? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We're going to talk about style. Every time I reboot it, I reveal, reboot an infinite number of times. Plus, that's a great calls. security measure until you take into account that the average reboot time for a lot of users is like once every three months. <laughs> you can give away a lot of data in that time. So is this Apple's new a way to get people to upgrade? Right now? <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, the 10.9 actually what Seth Roger was talking about was also pretty awesome, and the fact that it was on Google Code um, that Mr. Beers, I believe, uh, in, uh, put it up there. They put up the proof of concept because it's been patched in 10.10. <laughs> hmm. Sadtrombone.com. Uh, and it was like a one-line change. He's like, <laughs> progress. And now it works on 10.9. I'm really hoping that Apple decides they're going to patch this too now because it's pretty much a, well, it's a proof of concept that you can do more than just touch slash temp. What's that line that says touch slash temp? Maybe I want to replace that with what my payload is. Yeah. There's, a, there's a, a list of security issues they're not fixing in Mac. It's kind of 
Right. Just trust. Do you guys get to like yeah. patch the OS yourself? Yeah. On 10.9? We have patched a couple of things. Yeah. Can we talk? That's the joke. Uh, <laughs> we uh, we patched a few things. Well, so we uh, the NGP thing uh, we disabled the, the bits of NGP that caused the bug before the bug was public. But that you know, this only because we received a squirrel. Is the right people, but right. And Git, we're patching pretty heavily. Yeah, yeah, things like that. Whatever it is, it's it's it's, it's just occasionally we might hear from an internal security people about something that's slightly before the public, but well after the security people have all talked about it. Yeah. We don't have any major patches. Like that was we changed, we changed we changed the NTP dot com file. To, to right. Do something that was it. We, we weren't we weren't like binary patching the NTP binary. Yeah, no. Hey, hello, gentlemen. There he is. Hey, it's fine. Sorry, I, I was I just wanted to chime in on this uh, NTP thing. So we we asked Apple about this uh, regarding older OSs that we still need to support, and they basically told us with 10.7 to. Uh, Look at their awesome new OS options that they have for these computers. So basically, they are not patching it at all, which kind of brings us to the point of when can we trust Apple to actually officially say an OS is retired? Because it gets really, really muddy with um, users that you know that really, really want you to keep 10.7 in 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 your supported arsenal when we really want to get rid of it. I don't know how others feel about you know Apple being so sort of non-committal with this stuff. I know 10.6 is, I guess, sort of retired, but it's really hard to get that out of Apple. Have you guys had the same experience dealing with them, or? Yeah, that, that kind of matches the experience I ha I've had. The only OS I think I've ever seen Apple officially declare dead was OS 9. <laughs> and I think that was more for marketing than anything else. I don't think, I mean, I've. This was 6. You know, 10.6, they're still patching that. You know, they're still putting out iTunes updates for that. Who the heck no, knows? No, 10, not 10.6, System 6. <laughs> system 6 is dead. <laughs> <laughs> system 6 is dead. We were actually just talking about that. Like, should we, lay, should we let five-year-old computers just stick around in general? But then my feeling has always been, if it can't run more than two OSs behind, if the hardware can't get it, then you can get rid of that. It's also just, I don't want to... I want to have as small a window as possible before everyone's on the most current OS. Because yeah. otherwise, how else can I keep pace with everything that we need to do to get our jobs done on this platform? Period. If I can't target the most current all of the time to report when it comes to bugs or any other regressions that I want to know about, right. I can't really, I can't continue to look back to to past no. OSs. Two versions is is almost. Yeah. Being nice. As soon as as soon as the newest OS or the beta of the newest OS or whatever comes out with a system release that says, uh, you know, this particular set of models will no longer be updated to support it, um, my goal is generally to have those systems replaced by the time the following OS comes out at the latest. How much control do you, do you have in your budget? Like, like, do you command your budget, or do you have someone that? You have to talk to. What budget? Okay. Yeah. So that's... you're able to replace views without a budget, or do they just get rid of them? Just the ones that have to look. Oh, okay. Right. I mean, we're 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 considered separate from them, but they are okay. ordering, right? But like, so therefore, if if we can't support it and they can't get their jobs done, that sucks for them. But then they need to find money in their budget, right? It also speaks volumes towards the capitalist posture with regards. Like you're talking about having a budget, you're, you're, you're brought up. Like clearly, there's organizations that you can't afford to replace a machine every five years, maybe six, maybe seven. And some of these devices do have. I mean, granted, a lot of them kind of have a three to five year lifespan physically until they break down. Um, but I mean, if it's a stationary iMac, it could live. If the hardware could live ten years, and it's unfortunate. Like some companies cannot sink a thousand dollars or more paying for hardware. So it would be nice. They're not typewriters. Right, but you know, for, for most use cases, they say like love people. Letters. people <laughs> and sometimes, go ahead. sorry, I interrupted. I was going to say, sometimes it's also not the hardware per se. Um, sometimes it is <coughs> software 
and I run into this in like medical research over and over again, where someone will have written a software package that does its job exquisitely well after like six or seven iterations. It's only doing the job really well. And then that person stops writing it, but everyone keeps using it. And here we are 10 years later, and you're like, I, I really want to upgrade you. No, 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 I need this. <laughs> I really want to get you off of XP. No, I need this. Yeah. It does the one thing really, really well. Well, are there any alternatives? No, because everybody's using this. Now contact is literally the one exception to the rule I just stated. I have one person in our organization using now contact, migrating him to something else, like Insightly. It's just a total quagmire. And so, I don't know, when that computer dies, he's probably going to die along with it just from not <laughs> yep. being able to make the jump. <laughs> and that'll be the end of that. But. Yeah. I mean, my, fa my favorite example of that from my old gig was I had, uh, um, I, I supported a lab that had a sequencer that only output to uh, three and a quarter floppy disk, three and a half. What was, what was the old plastic ones? Was that three and a half, five and a quarter, three and a half? They're both um, plastic, but yeah. It yeah. only output to floppy, and they had a PowerBook 2400. I kid you not. PowerBook 2400 with the floppy drive that served as basically the intermediary between that scanner and the network. They'd plug in the floppy, they'd connect to it over like uh, uh, Apple Talk, you know, like, you know, file sharing over Apple Talk, and that's how they got stuff out. And I said, I asked them one time, I was like, well, what happens if this laptop ever dies? They said, well, we'll just get another one. I said, no, you won't. Yeah. <laughs> eBay, you'd be surprised. Yeah. Maybe. You'll have to buy three just to build one. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe one. I've noticed, I just love to hear everyone's take, you know, giving people a picture. Um, I've noticed a rash of malware coming through the browser or any plugging and whatnot. And I, granted, I haven't been a Mac admin for so long. I did it 10 years ago, and now I'm back to time. Sorry, I'm the best server guy the past five, six years. Um, but now that I'm doing Macs again, I, over the past three months, I've just, tons and tons of people I know have gotten infected with Like the Trovi.com adware kind of yeah, stuff? Yeah, okay. adware stuff. And what are you guys doing to prevent against that? Antivirus? Yeah, we find it to deploy antivirus. Which one? No, yeah, we're still not. I just run adware medic on it if it, if it pops up. But if it became more widespread. Well, so we... Uh, we, we, there was a lot of talk uh, about uh, like you can just remove Genio, but Genio never comes alone, and it always is bundled with eight other pieces of malware that the Genio remover doesn't see or the aren't necessarily common or visible, or, so it's very worrisome. But what's well, that SOP after like? What I detect used to, an incident, someone's computer is going haywire. Just want to hear a professional thing. Well, free image. Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't know. Sometimes too lazy to look into it. So. Well, but also, if you don't know, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and time consuming. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you have, yeah. unless you have ex exhaustive audit logs of exactly everything that happened from the time that the thing showed up to now, and you know exactly what kind of installed anywhere on the machine, it's better just. Less time just I mean, unless someone says, yeah, I dragged the Genium binary on and ran it. <laughs> okay, yeah, we can remove that. But if they ran an infected installer, who knows? I saw, I saw the installer on somebody's desktop next to the Unity 3D player. Nice. I was, was kind of like, did you install everything you found on the internet, no matter where you went? <laughs> you on every banner? But I think that uh, one of the things I was looking at was pretty much I look at whatever anybody stars on GitHub that I follow. Hmm. I follow 180 people. And the newest thing is the Python, hey, give me an audit, and hopefully it doesn't involve PIP. But I like the fact that it specifically targets all of the browsers and tells me everything from all of the SQL databases of all of the rows of all of the browsers. And that's kind of nice to also tell you where things came from if you cared about then blacklisting things. Because the, the number one problem, because uh, I was looking at Santa for uh, Christmas for, uh, for North Pole. So the number one problem with blacklisting processes or just whitelisting processes that you do want 
is maintaining that list and having that centralized. And so if you start from the, I'm not worried about remediation, I'm worried about kind of um, after the fact doing forensics, then you can build a database internally to say, I don't like these things, or I notice that we run across these problems, and then counteract that. So I think that's at least a way for me to get started, is running these scans, if anyone ever closes their browser ever, that be able to actually do the thorough look through the these SQLite databases, and then point out from there, OK, that's where they got that. We need to stop start blocking this at the network level, or the, or the firewall level, if we can actually get that going without third party problems. Because the number one thing I'm afraid of is uh, we looked at the HIPAA policies, because mm -hmm. we quite specifically need control about those things. And it does not say that you are required to run antivirus. It says that it is a recommendation for you to do. If we have to run antivirus, it's kind of like owning yourself. Though. You know, you're giving something root privileges that you don't control or have visibility on. So anything that we can do that will also be as thorough to protect the machines from infection, is what we're looking at. And then it's just like we look through the launch agents, we look through the launch payments, we look through temp just because, like if you got a spot check it, you spot check it. If I, if I don't have time to re-image it or this, this person's leaving immediately and they need to take a machine, like I'll just look through the normal, the usual suspects as they say. You use Puppet a lot, correct? We're starting to use Puppet. Oh, okay. We're building the infrastructure that will then manage the max with Puppet. In your research, would Puppet or something like that allow you to set that standard? And if something came to the browser, it would kill it? Our big, uh, one of the things that we liked about it when evaluating <coughs> is the fact that you can audit very minute things. You can say, I just want to know if these things have changed. I don't need you to remediate. That's one of the things I really like about this guy who happens to be a Casper admin. He says, oh, the NTP. If you haven't run the NTP update, I'm going to run software update dash I dash A now. And I'm kind of like, you're doing your figuring out that you need to run it while you're remediating it. That's that's kind of not how I want to roll. So I like the fact that public can kind of say, granularly, if I have anything that I'm concerned with, just notify me. And like there was even early on when I took public training years and years ago, where like there was somebody who got emails every single because I guess email is how you communicate. Well, it is a, it's a ridiculously powerful tool for very granular interaction with the machine. I was also looking at, um, I think Facebook has the OS query. They build a SQL database, essentially, of the running system, and you can run SQL queries against it, which I guess is a plus to somebody. To, uh, to what? Determine what's, whether something's changing the file system? Just to be able to say the way that I would query a database of this information if it was up somewhere, I want to be able to query it against the system. As for people who find SQL queries fun to work with, so I guess. It was just really interesting as a thought experiment that they wanted to quantify a running OS as a database. Because it is essentially like an open Files is the activities going on all the time. So that is a way to think about it. Like, so it, there's lots of things to choose. Yeah. Our, I mean, our, I, I think, at least for us, Google, our ends, the, the best end game will be Santa in full, you know, white list. Yeah. Right. And then with some better solution to manage all of the, the exceptions. But, oh, oh, yeah. What a, what a great name. Isn't that great that the community comes up with the naming though, so that yeah. you can blame somebody else? <laughs> but, because honestly, I, I, other, than, other than having you know, uh, a white listing solution, everything else is sort of like whack and roll yeah. where you're, so, you're blacklisting 1,000 URLs, but there's 10,000 more that so those who are don't just know, as bad. Right. Santa is an open source binary whitelisting tool that Google released. Whitelisting or blacklisting? Yes. Whitelisting, black, yeah, sorry. Whitelisting, blacklisting. Binary control tool that we open sourced a couple months ago. Right. Uh, North Pole is an open source server for Santa that has nothing to do with us, uh, which it allows you to, to control what <coughs> binaries are whitelisted or blacklisted on your client machines. Mm -hmm. 
Does it we, come pre -set is it like a subscription or? service or? No, it's an open source thing. Yeah. And, we, uh, and I would say that we have not released an open source server for managing Santa yet. Santa's a client. Santa's a client. Santa's a client. It's basically the client agent that reads the local database. Does Santa stand for something? or? No, it just knows if you're naughty or you're nice. Lightning, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I thought you were I'm joking before when you were making North Pole jokes. I had heard of no. Santa, but I hadn't heard of North yeah. Pole yet. Yeah, North Pole is just someone else who wanted to. So we released the client with no server yeah. uh, yet. Uh, and someone else obviously wanted to do more with it than just manually manage the local SQLite data, SQL database. So. Well, that's usually what happens, right? A lot of these open source account. tools were like, you get the client yeah. stuff and then the server management tools yeah. come in afterwards. Yeah. Does there, but, so, I mean, you know, antivirus will certainly save you from a lot of imaging because it'll probably catch the genius and the random stuff before it gets installed. So in some uh, cases. But by, so the advantage of binary whitelisting is it catches stuff that, like, yeah. antivirus is going to catch things with known signatures. Yeah. The advantage of yeah. binary whitelisting is it catches things without known signatures. Right. Some some specifically crafted targeted malware just for you. The binary whitelisting will stop that right. because it's not in the list, so it must have managed to crack Which out the signing key. Does North Pole come with a preloaded list? I don't know much about North Pole. I just heard about it a couple of days ago for the first time. Yeah, I, I just know someone else has been writing that. Go. In, in Go, I think. Is it? Anyway. Maybe not. And I'm sure I'm not even sure what platform it runs on. But. Come on, so that's not it. Over the what? Node. I like the fact that it's a text that one must get their own signature for and get going. Because it is that low level that yep. if you don't kind of know what you're doing, you could make a pretty inoperable system. Right. right. It's running right. at a very, very low level. Right. Yeah. San the Santa agent. Yeah, Apple's, runs. Apple's changed the, the for good reason that the lock down kernel extensions on SMD. So like they have to have a signature up or unless you're running in like a specific debug mode, which is really dumb. Dumb to do, not dumb for Apple to have done. So, right. so uh, we've provided and it's hard to get Apple to give you a certificate, a kernel extension sign certificate. Uh, so we, we, we begged a while. We got one. So then we, we compile the Santa extension and give the we have the source code if you want to build it yourself, but you'll need to sign it on your own, and that's a complicated thing. Here's the signed version of what we built. So. Yeah, I'm still just trying to get the basics of uh, the Pi Mac admin. Just tell me what the heck ran and get that uh, that's still good. database that I can therefore look at and audit log of processes. Yeah. Just because we tried to look at inventory <coughs> from Jams and we tried to look at inventory from Jam, and Jam tried to give us inventory. And we saw that the screensaver was the number one thing in use on people's systems, and we're kind of like, how's about let's stop looking at Jam to be the solution to application usage? Like, Login window is not a process, but I need you to report on it. Thank you very much. Right. Sorry? You can have whitelist blacklists for the own internals. Like, obviously, so it doesn't have to be locked. So, flag it. <laughs> right. So, so, just like the getting the database together of this program launched at this time and it this long. I need that for licensing anyway. I need that to know that uh, we're actually using all of our office licenses, for example. Yeah. Us, I uh, found that a little podcast. interesting that it wasn't built in. It's like, there are certain features built into the tool, and but they don't take it to that next level. Jason is leading you right when it comes to JSS because he knows everything about the JSS and it's a great friend. So I'm not going to say anything bad in front of somebody who's Jason about the JSS because it's great. <laughs> or in front of <laughs> in front of Penton's award-winning <laughs> presenter at the chain. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I don't know that topic. Um, I was reading this this morning. Uh, first time I saw uh, the article, and I, we might have mentioned it uh, like two meetings ago, or I guess two months ago when we had our last meeting. Um, so I, I guess if you have somebody, they changed a uh, couple of different things. But one of the, the you know, the, the daemons was uh, Discovery D was you know put in place to to replace uh, M and M. And, yeah, yeah, and, and uh, you know, basically in this article, they were just talking about like all these issues that were coming up, and and we haven't deployed Yosemite yet. And I, I was just wondering, you know, have people, have other people, like other Mac admins, been running into issues? And go. Yes. So far, so far, Yosemite's been. A, uh, Unpleasant from a like a Wi-Fi point of view, name discovery, name resolution point of view, just general sort of. It's just generally not I, not good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay. we, so we, we're we're incredibly anxious to move to it because a lot of the security bugs that have come out are not fixed in that person. They are fixed in the same thing. But then you also get like Wi-Fi crappiness. And, Specifically, has the resolution been a thing, though? Yeah. Well, so, so, so they, they rewrote. They, they took away MVS Responder and wrote Discovery D from scratch, which was a terrible idea. Because, of course, now that all of, all of the cruft and crazy bits from MVNS Responder, <laughs> were, those were all fixing bugs uh, that since got rid of, and now all those bugs are coming back. <laughs> because, you know, they didn't carry over all the cruft and weird. So, uh, and Here's where the article continues, though. It, 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 they say at the end, like, if you don't want to experience these issues, you can actually port over the working. Oh, <laughs> and it's like, you know, do it at your own risk. But it's just like, I don't think I'm going to deploy an OS with a patched version of... No, um, no, I mean, yeah, we're, we're probably, I mean, we're, we're going to sort of move with your sort of as is with the list of these are the things that are right. crappy. But it, I mean the, the, the big three three that I'm hearing are, are Wi-Fi, DNS this morning, and then uh, some of the AD issues with like booting up and just not getting past the, the boot screen at 50%. Yeah, I just went the, the rounds without build up that. Yeah, yeah. And it's like those are I, three. Thankfully we don't use that. It is quite specifically Active Directory, and it's, right, it's the not even fix volt or anything like that. It, you have to snack boot caches, but then uh, you also need to specify a DS bind timeout. It doesn't matter what the DS bind timeout is. It doesn't matter that the default, according to the framework, is 60 seconds. If you specify one, it will actually let you timeout and log in. Hmm. So, and then you're fixed from that point forward because it's a because they haven't forensically said, okay, or put their finger on, okay, this is what is broken and why it happens on four so far out of 20 machines. So I'll, I'll that's a stupid percentage, yeah. but it's also like weird that it's only been that intermittent. Same exact hardware models, same OU containers. Is this oh, after you initially bind it, and so one time well, thing? The moment you to... bind it, sometimes people are able to more steadily uh, get it going by just pulling the plug on it and forcing it down, and then when you boot back up again, it, it's hung. And the symptom is, if, if between a third and a half of the, prog of the progress bar, you don't get a mouse cursor, you got. It. So it's, it's easy to recognize. Uh, but some I've re-imaged the moment you bind it again. So it's nothing special about the image at all. So I stopped re-imaging at least like a smart person. Uh, you know, backup data, but data's cheap. And you said set the what? What do you need to change on it? So Find Rien uh, is the first one who, from the Apple ticket, um, got its a slash show. No, do I know it by heart? Um, I'll say slash private slash bar slash dp slash capital boot capital C caches. But like just cat food cash, if you star that to get rid of it, that is probably the most likely culprit. But people are also snacking uh, slash library slash caches combat apple everything, mm -hmm. just because you know 
just NuGet to make sure, right? NuGet to be, you can only be sure of one way. Uh, and then also the DS bind timeout is a capital DSB bind capital T timeout. Is this on any on the login window? Is this on, on your blog or anywhere I can just Google? So there there are like two threads. So I can't I type as fast are, as you can so type. So all of us are really like resilient to like actually documenting this because it's so effing pernicious and it's so effing stupid. Plus, it's only AD related, so. Craig, and that's. I, I have my uh, some high, uh, higher ups pushing for uh, going to 1010 because they have FB one option they want, and I have tons of options to say no. I'll put it on AFP 548 because I specifically just went around yesterday with Apple's uh, our enterprise uh, support, and they said we don't see it even in a beta of 1010 that it's fixed. Uh, so when it's an outstanding bug like this, that's obviously really pernicious. That's, that's interesting. Because I was there, there was there was someone on, on John Nation that was saying that they were running 1010 and it had fixed it for them, but maybe I mean, that's when you have that when it's less than a third of the machines that I've done so far that have had this issue, it's still gosh darn often enough, but it's like rolling the five sided die. Yeah. How many machines have they tested on too? Like Oh, I don't know. I just, I, I'm just reading. I haven't touched till <laughs> seven. I don't. I mean, we also have something where the machine is 100% fine until you fall vaulted, and that is really annoying because <laughs> you really want it to be fall vaulted. What about the third-party um, AD tools? Do those have problems, or it's just Apple's? I've, you know, it's sometimes on jam Nation, It's kind of like monkeys with typewriters. <laughs> Like, have you, your VRAM? Did you try to send a free plug in? Did you? Um, but that's just because I'm, I'm a part of that. Because um, people who have not seen the Sentinel with third party connectors. I don't know what the extent to what they could do. So I, I guess, like, the, the, the biggest one out there is Centrify, right? Yeah. So that'd be interesting to hear people's experience with that. I'm using the Apple AD plugin, and I have found a fairly reliable way to reproduce this for testing, which is basically uh, bind your machine to AD, log in with an account, you know, just regular AD account. Um, I've been testing with mobile accounts. I don't know if this also works with network accounts. But basically, after you log in, just hard power off with the power button. Yep. And next boot, you'll see it. Oh. <laughs> I'm trying to remember machines. I can't, I can't be great, which is... Just as annoying as well. Well, um, there is something very special about your AD. Well, but we don't. We, we revert the core storage. There are many like it, but this one is yours. <laughs> the only thing is, I know that we revert the core storage volume because we'll be using data on a simple partition. Oh, yeah. Or something weird like that. But I'm trying to, when I get back to the office, I'm going to try and break it so just so I don't feel left out. But there are loads of threads on this on Mackie and on Jamf Nation and so many interesting ones coming in this as well. The last one out. Can I tell you that you're crazy to the first one? Probably too good to like make that statement. Oh yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm not going to say that. <laughs> Just because that's with the standard vanilla OS installed now. No, it's partitioned already. You're still going to oh, yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's another day of engineering. That's like when they introduced uh, the recovery partition and people were trying to take it out, and it's like. We. Uh, so I was. Heavy in the NCDMG project, and we we're happy that it, we didn't have it. So we didn't I realize remember. why. <laughs> and then we caught up with the fact that we weren't doing journal of HFS Plus and it was giving up on trying to create it. Because it shouldn't. Uh, but then that was almost a feature for a little while. A little while. Because so I was annoyed that um, Deploy Studio was restoring it separately as well when it didn't need to. ASR will happily find both of the partitions inside of the. Uh, mm -hmm. Both of the volumes inside of it and uh, lay it down. Well, I've been actually having issues. Uh, so far, I've had five machines from a a Apple in the past two and a half months that have come with. Has, has anyone had the issue where it didn't have the recovery part partition? Like, well, I'm going to image it anyway. I go to Im you go to image it. It doesn't work, and then you try to net restore it, and it gives you a negative one zero zero five. Are you sure so that we had a few machines like that a while ago? And when you bring it to a a a Apple, their software tells them the hard drive is bad. So I've been getting more 
Uh, These are all Apple SSDs. Right, you said hard drives. Nope, they're all just regular hard drives. Right. They're not SSDs, okay. and they all have... Uh, and you're either. still holding or not? Probably not. I'm not. Right. Are they Fusion drives specifically? Nope. They're, they're, we don't deal with the Fusion drives. We only do the standard, like, 500 gigs. We have on like, dozens of machines a month, though, right? This is a pretty small sampling, relatively speaking. No, actually, uh, I mean, we've sort of toned down. So we probably purchase about maybe... Now about probably four machines a month. So out of sixteen, I've had five bad ones. That I That's very high. But they have still a friend at the Apple Store when he sees me come in and rather than go to the Genius Bar, I said, "Yep, another one zero zero five. It's like, yeah, just I'll, I'll call for the new computer because we order it and get it shipped to us. And yeah. Then I have to like, well, I don't want to wait for a repair. That's kind of nice. They give you like a brand new one. They don't refurbish it or anything like that. Yeah. Well, that's because I know someone wow. there. Like a manager's like, hey, you're here way too much. Just, just I'll go call. I think you're special though. I think uh, you're you're finding something that most likely is an issue when you find enough. I mean, I'm I was just making sure that it wasn't the most basic thing of when you fall fault, you don't see the recovery permission and often, yeah. for example. No, I mean, I did that. It is fresh out of the box when I go Wait, and... Wait, you tell CS listing it, though? When I go to you, uh, the... Dis uh, when I boot to my uh, net boot and yeah. I do dish utility, it shows the hard drive, uh, then it shows the regular o OS, and then it shows a grayed-out hard drive, uh, uh, Mac HD, hmm. the EFI, and another EFI, all grayed out. And I can't re-image it. I can't repartition it from there. It's I don't know what I see. I'm something so screwed up in the partition map or something. I yeah, I, I, think, a, I think they they image system or something. Or just bad, bad drives. drives. Yeah. It, it's yeah. weird. It puts a good OS that will run really, really slow and have <laughs> issues. Because that's how I first found out. Is I just you know imaged it and I didn't realize it didn't put the recovery partition in. Well, no, actually, I built his from scratch because I something was broken, so I had to build it from scratch. Then he was complaining about it slow for a couple of weeks. I'm like, that's weird. So I was like, I'll just take your machine and I'll reimage it. And I went to reimage, it didn't work. What the hell's going on? Hmm. I wonder if it would be able to successfully zero out the drive. Hmm? I wonder if it would be able to successfully zero out the drive. I'm just curious if it would actually finish the process. Well, when I actually when when I actually go to if I net boot, boot it and have my dish utility, at least through through, through there, everything's grayed out to repartition it. Hmm. Like well, it's with the, it. you'll see that with core storage volumes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would want to, like, I'm so tied into the Deploy Studio interface and just how it shows me permissions yeah. of disk utility, but you shouldn't really rely on any of that. It's just you tell a list of command lines and disk utility CS lists. Let's okay. get started. It's because you want to most likely kill the logical, the, the was it the volume family? Logical like volume, volume group. Yeah. The LPG. Okay. I had a great error when we were initiating file ball at the login window today from a, a login hook where it said it couldn't create the logical volume group. I can just keep failing, keep failing, keep failing. And I was like, I'm at the login window and we're stuck now. And it wouldn't complete the login, it wouldn't reboot. I'd already seen a progress bar on it trying to initiate the encryption. And so I killed the login window. And he just logged right back in. <laughs> I was like, all right, let's reboot now. <laughs> and it was fine that like it wasn't there wasn't a lot of active data on the machine. And I'm out of shit. I've got a really rambling post of all my crazy findings on storage uh, on Mac Mill. So um, yeah, I've put all the commands in there and stuff and stuff I struggle with figuring that helps. I've nice. listed some out there and some of my findings. A lot of the commands are actually not documented, even though they've been around since 1070. Such as like resizing volumes, I think it's one that's not there, and so when you do something stupid like partition like I do, it becomes really <laughs> difficult to, to mess around with. So yeah, it's it's in there. Um, if it helps. It's like an expect strip. If you're if you're running strings on a binary, how to do the things you want it to do? I've got expect strips in my book. And you grab before lock. Um, but it does sound like yeah, it's got multiple core storage volumes on there, which is weird. That's, Disk utility won't allow you to partition more than two core storage volumes per logical, uh, logical volume group. Correct. But you can do it through uh, disk utility or CS, uh, create volume and other, other tools. So, but like I said earlier, I think it might be whoever's imaging them before they come to you. 
they their workflow screwed up somewhere. Mm -hmm. Could be this one intern that they had two months ago. You got them all, you know. <laughs> Any other exciting comments? Questions? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. We can end it on this. Um, so, in, so I've been now at my current job now like four months or so, and it's it's a bit of a process trying to like rebuild things without taking the current infrastructure out, right? Um, and there's a, a bit of a cultural and behavioral component to things, right? And one of the issues that's going to come up, and I'm just trying to think ahead on how to tackle it, is how do you deal with pushing out updates to computers um, to end users that rarely log out or rarely restart their computers? Um, you know, how do you how do you deal with that? Um, force it. Yeah, yeah monkey. Use, it, use this up like a force it. Yeah. yeah. We use, I mean, we, we rely on Monkey, and Monkey lets you put a deadline on anything. And it gives basically the user, you set the deadline, and the user gets a notifications. You know, this is a forced update. You'll have, you have until this time to do it. And then as the deadline gets closer, they'll get daily reminders pop up saying, you know, this is coming. And then they get hourly reminders, and then they actually passes the deadline by an hour. It just logs them out. So it goes daily, then hourly. No then chance like to save. Minutely, no, no, no. Then minutely, and then, like, so, sorry. so then the other question is, how much uh, kickback have you had from end users? Because, ah, what the hell? I had it in my computer restarted. Like, we, you know. I mean, so it, much more. It comes up occasionally. People do complain, obviously. People yeah. like to complain. But, um, you know, everyone gets two weeks. Of, we, we try never to do it in shorter than two weeks. If we do it in less than two weeks, it's a big deal. There's some, there's some real big reason. Um, we try to show that Usually, everyone's had a lot of warning. And you can select it to what groups in Monkey to. Yeah. And, and so, so people that that carry a lot of weight, I, I, I don't do that. I usually just sneak in their uh, uh, right. office when they're at lunch and restart the computer and make it happen. Yeah. But other than that, we don't actually we don't actually exclude anybody anymore, but we we used to. Have you actually moved to Monkey too? Yeah. Okay. They moved to Monkey too. Not done. Uh. Largely happy with it. We moved because he said it was the Monkey One wasn't going to support Yosemite, but actually it does. So, but we moved <laughs> and we're happy with the new version. So, what were you going to say? I've been doing this for Windows environment for the past six years. Okay, obviously, more crucial than now becoming crucial for our nice little Mac world. But a lot of it has to do with service acumen. It's it's the way you approach it to them. You're going to be like, I'm forcing you to reboot now. You go meet with some of those critical people or the resistant people. You'll bring a stack of news articles regarding NTP hack and what it could do and influence their bank accounts or whatever. And like, you sit down and like, listen, I really apologize that you know we're changing the reboot policy. But I'd like to take a couple minutes to speak with you as to why. And then, you know, like, if anyone argues with those, you know, like it's it's on them. But you politely discussed it with them, and that really just sh shows your integrity as you know, a systems administrator. You're trying to do the right thing for your organization and you know these really well educated people that are at the top of this this food chain and these big ways like they'll appreciate that because they know that you're supporting their environment and supporting their company. Yeah, well, we 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 know what orders should apply. So we have applied the own company, I don't have to worry about any kind of I don't have to update anything <coughs> when I do it. Um, I use all admins, so if they go to YouTube and flashes out date that updates it. So I just literally do that but we do, do, we do cache updates, so once a week we use Terminal Notify to let them know that it sits there all day till they click it, and then they do a restart, and it will run. But if they don't restart for a week, it's not a problem. There's also a whole drive from HR and corporate responsibility about energy saving and stuff like that. So you don't have to force them to, to restart because there's, there's a whole other culture about it as well. And the thing that I've been, when I started at Penman four years ago, there was no Mac. Uh, management. There was 60 Macs on our management. We got 230 Macs across eight offices globally. Um, a small number compared to most of you guys. But um, just knowing that we're telling these guys, we're here to help you work. We're here to stabilize the environment for you. And they've started to realize that when we do these patches and stuff, it's most of it's following along with that. And also it means they get the latest iTunes for their new iPhone and things like that, which is what they really want. 
uh, or, or flash and things like that. Chain them together so that they'll accept them all at right. once. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, there's places that like they have a Wednesday schedule, yeah. or they try to make it a part of their lives or stuff like that. Whereas we uh, we just had some old updates that we realized weren't there wasn't enough uptake. And I enabled it immediately for two weeks in the past. And you got an eight-hour countdown. And nobody said a peep. <laughs> Not a peep. So sometimes we have this attitude where we're kind of like, if we tell them that, oh my gosh, compliance is coming down on me, and it's got to happen, people are understanding. And they kind of like, they, they go back off. And, and the bargaining starts from a further place away on the table. Not that we can just do because the environment. Yeah, I mean, I think that's two two great things. Like, one is it's it's really good to just make your SLA very clear with the users. And like we have like we have a commitment. We will not restart your machine unless we absolutely have to. So when we say we have to, you gotta trust us. So we really do have to. Like you know we've you know really gone out of our way to make sure we can do everything without interrupting your work. And you know if you tell users that like I will always avoid restarting you. If I tell you I have to, I have to. And the other thing is that we also have the luxury of having a department in charge of security that we can point to and say, oh, they told us we have to do this. <laughs> yeah. You know, and we have compliance. Yeah, compliance told me. So you can, but you can create that. I say, like, I go to Rich Troughton's website, <laughs> and when he says there's something that's important, I know it's important because he just knows his stuff. And look, you, you can. You, know, you, you, give him, you can give all your users his email address. Yeah. And so, <laughs> when I go to your flounder and it says panic, I panic, and I trust him, and, like, you know. <laughs> Departments called compliance. No kidding. Just like people who make sure you have three prong power cords. I swear to God, that's a job. What? They do a great job. They provide a great service no. because otherwise we'd have a fire in the hospital. Who kind of nice and make sure that never happened. So it's very easy for people to be like, you know, maybe I should act responsibly. A lot of times. We just let it roll and see if we have to bargain from them. Yeah. And, and, and we, we, when we made the change for force updates in Monkey, like two or three years ago, or four, <laughs> when, when you're from a long time ago, yeah. <laughs> seems like we seen, anyway. We, I expected more blowback than there was. I mean, we had some kind of, you know, complaining, but I mean, considering how many people who are in our user base, it was not that many. <laughs> so I think you guys found generally the users they saw becoming a little bit more, they're a little bit more aware as well. Um, yeah. They're a little bit more computer literate, uh, maybe not in education, uh, but just generally people are a bit more tech savvy, so they understand when there's pop-ups. And they know it's managed, they'll understand that, like, pop-up for a security update that's coming from your business, they'll understand that there's a reason for it, and they're happy to comply. That's, I can't kind of see it that way. I don't know if that's a, a trend or well, if that's just. Well, our biggest problem are people who are too tech savvy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know how to manage my machine. You don't have to make this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have uh, we haven't restricted the app store. We're all standard users, but you have two app stores, and that's weird. But it also is kind of like, no, it's really nice, and Apple makes everything that just works, right? We we have this stuff too. You want more stuff that you don't have to pay for that you want us to distribute for you? Maybe you'll actually tell us about that now. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's weird that like having Monkey Two, especially as the front end, helps it be a experience where also Monkey Two doesn't log you out by default. Period. Right. Which is a big change. It used to be, hey, I want you to actually clean up your gosh darn user memory. How's about log out of your user session? People don't want to do that ever. And it was like, but come on, I'm hedging with having you not restart sometimes. Wait, so how do they deal with it then? By default, Monkey 2, you don't need to log out. It will just follow you until you quit any application that happens to be a blocking application that happens to be open. That's a big change. So it's, it's a lot more like, oh, it's all friendly. You made the button when you click install, install the gosh darn thing, you know? Right there in that interface. There's no um, flip to another modal dialogue about something. There's a lot of optimizations now that make it a lot easier to be user facing and user uh, digestible. We're also pretty aggressive in upgrading people to the next OS, next major OS. Like we don't want to support more than one. So and <laughs> <laughs> that's right? nice, right? So I mean, and and 
probably 85 or 90 percent of that is because of security. That, like, well, what does no support mean, though? So, uh, <laughs> oh, so just so you don't get certs? No, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, so at the generally the end of our so we have there's a there's a there's obviously a time limit too. Right? We don't just there's not like a Friday. All right, that won't change. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, usually there's a, I don't know call it a call it a quarter. But then you know where we have there's the new one is out, the old one is still there, and then you know, you can you can sort of see the graphs kind of crisscross so no matter the you know ten, you know. Ten, ten, Probably happened with 1010 maybe a little bit slower than did with 109. But I mean, 109 it was, you know, we, we said we're out, and then I don't know, a short time later we said, all right, the deadline to upgrade is X, you know, whatever, two months from now, and off you go. And then at the end of that, then we sort of had like there's a, you know, we get more stickish where you know we have like the deprecation sure, notifier and yeah, things like that, or there was. Remove, you know, revoking certs, you know, so they can't actually <laughs> access their corporate. You know, then it becomes it becomes like a personal laptop essentially, which is perhaps all they really want. But whatever, that's a you know. So, uh, it gets it, harder and harder to work. Yeah, it gets harder and harder to work. And then and then you know and then we and then we can obviously they're still checking into the, to our inventory systems and whatnot, so we can track them down. And sometimes you know we'll, we'll in, towards the end towards the end there's that sort of the, the small the small long tail of like you know. So the stragglers and we'll sort of hunt those down individually for the most part. But there's usually not that many. There's one guy who really just hasn't been working for the last six months but doesn't want to report his laptop stolen. Well, it's often actually the ones that are stolen are the last few to report in. Like, you're going to steal a laptop and not reformat it? What are you doing with it? <laughs> yeah, and, and also there's, uh, obviously, with the, as many people as we have, there's a lot of, like, I have this laptop and I've been using it and I put it in my desk and my drawer could have had a new desktop and then, I don't know, Six months go by, and we've switched OSs, and they're like, oh, right, I need to do something. Grab my laptop out. Turn it on for the first time in six months. And WTF. Alarms go off, and they're like, what's going on? And, you know, everything's weird. I mean, we had a, we had a, this is a while ago, we had a G4 Mac Pro show up, uh, like, spun up and reported in to our to our inventory systems running, like, at 10.4. Huh. Which is ancient for us. This was, like, this was like in the 10.7 days, right? So... <laughs> Uh, and I, you know, I was kind of like, hey, I was, I was impressed that our, our <laughs> yeah. management tools, the management tools, still going. Uh, the server side could still understand the old, the old client stuff. It was enough at least to say, hi, it showed up, and then we, we said, oh yeah, it was underneath someone's desk. We plugged it in and see what was going on with it. Yeah. But so anyway, that, that, but that helps. Anyway, but my point was the freaking OS updates. You know, you know, once a year at this point, it's sort of got our users used to doing things, you know, because of, you know, because of reasons. That's the help. <clears throat> Do things because of reasons. That's a basic, good basic format for an email. Yeah. <laughs> email well, reason. <laughs> All set. Oh, well, we're on the topic of Monkey 2 since we. Uh, Brush on it. I actually have a question. It's more of kind of just to get a consensus consensus from you guys. But you guys have a preference for like a web reporting console? Because I've only ever used a monkey web admin. I'm really fond of uh, Simeon. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, I meant local servers. No. Uh, I've only ever used Simeon. I know some people recommend Sound. Okay. What is it? Sound. 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 Uh, really by like Craig Gilbert. My mic. I'm very interested in Cell. Uh, Monkey Report is probably the easiest to spin up, though, because it's PHP. I don't know why PHP still exists, but it does. And it's great that it's, it's runs full of awesome. the biggest websites in the world. Um, it's easier, therefore, to actually get going. Uh, people have written plugins for it by hook or by crook because they know people who can run PHP. Uh, like, for example, getting your call vault key, some people have used it as an escrow service. <laughs> I think that's crazy, but uh, I think a lot of things are crazy. Um, yeah, uh, rounding out all of them. Mandel, uh, Cell, Monkey Report, and Monkey Web Admin are the ones I can uh, Monkey remember. Server is the Rails one that <coughs> is very Mac friendly. Uh, I haven't seen it in years, but I know that it was actively developed, at least up until recently. The main developer just got a, got a job. Um, but that one had the most power when it comes to being very GUI-like. Um, 
if you pair monkey with monkey admin, sometimes you don't need a lot from a configuration perspective, but from a reporting perspective and inventory perspective. Um, I really like Sal, uh, but monkey report and Sal are, are neck and neck. Okay. Cool. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming. Uh, we'll meet again next month. I don't think we have a topic planned, but we'll try to think of something exciting and fun. Thank you very much, Rich, for yeah. your talk. You left. Yeah. And I apologize for not being able to read the, uh, the text. Yeah, that's really, Ed's very good about that. Wow. All right. Okay. Thank you.